What's up, Nick fans? All right, I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Again, again in this channel, Dexter Henry. Thank you, thank you again, my bro, in uh, Nick Fans Brazil channel. No, man, thank you for having me. It's always good to talk to the Knicks fans, especially in Brazil. I still got to come and visit. I'm mad about that. I still got to get down to Brazil. We have to make that happen. We, that that has to happen, but I think this is time number three. I don't know if three or four I've been on with you, but I always love talking to you, Victor. So thank you, man. Me too, bro. Thank you so much again. Um, Dexter, uh, New York Knicks, nah? I, mm -hmm. I, I want your opinion about New York Knicks in this, this offseason. What's your opinion about uh, the movement, new players, What's the, your opinion about the New York Knicks in this offseason? Yeah, so this offseason, I was headed into it, and I said, look, there's a couple things they have to do. I said, you got to bring back OG Ananobi. You got to bring back Isaiah Hardenstein. Obviously, Isaiah didn't come back. However, and I, 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 there were a bunch of people I talked to when I had said this. I said, if the Knicks could somehow get Mikel Bridges, he's the perfect fit. Because some people, Victor, talked about Zach Levine. Some people talked about Carnty Towns. And I didn't want either of those players in New York. But I said, Mikel Bridges, I think, is a perfect fit. And I couldn't believe when they got him. I was stunned. That kicked off everything for the offseason. I was stunned. Um, I didn't think the Nets would trade with them. Did the Knicks pay a high price in terms of draft picks? Yes, but I think it's a move you had to make. I think... To be really good in the NBA right now, you have to have switchable wings. The Knicks have that. They have uh, guys who could defend. We were talking about this before we started recording. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. They've got guys who could do that. They can match up in different ways. They're deep. They have size. Could they add another center? Yes, and I think they will at some point. But I like this team because of their versatility and their depth. They have to stay healthy. But I love the offseason for the Knicks. I think the Knicks had a tremendous offseason. And maybe the most important thing that happened this offseason outside of the Bridges trade was the fact that Jalen Brunson signs an extension and takes so much less to give the team flexibility in this new era where you have the second apron, you have all these things you have to worry about. The team has room to still maneuver the next couple of years, not as many picks as they once had. But I just I loved it. I loved them going in from Mikel Bridges. He's a perfect third, fourth option on this team. They're very deep. They're going to rebound. They're going to defend. They're going to play the way Knicks fans like. I think that this is a team Knicks fans can be proud about. I think they can be very much think that they can win a championship this year. They're in the conversation for that. Um, this is I, I see you praying, Victor. This is <laughs> this is as exciting as a season to me upcoming, at least much anticipation as Knicks fans have had in quite some time. So I give the Knicks, honestly, I give them an A for their offseason. You know, the only thing you that you would like is could they have brought back Hardenstein, but they weren't going to be able to offer more than a 16.2 uh, or 16.8 million, whatever it was. And Oklahoma came and blew him out the water. He had to take that money. I would have probably taken that money. Um, so I, I get it. It wasn't for lack of trying, but I think they had to go get somebody like Bridges. Um I think this Knicks front office has been very good. If you look at the team building over the last four to five years, the way they've done it, the moves they've made, they, they understand what kind of team they want to be. They've gotten those players in here. And I think, like I said before, I think this is a team Knicks fans can be proud of for sure. Absolutely. I totally agree. I totally agree with you. <laughs> uh, and Jalen Brunson, bro, what's yeah. your expectations with this guy, our franchise player, our mm. franchise player. What's your your expectations with Jalen Brunson in the next season? Look, I, I was saying this to somebody today, Victor, and that I'm so impressed with Jalen Brunson and how he's been since he became a New York Nick. He just understands, I think, playing in New York, being a leader, And there's something about him that reminds me of some of the great leaders we've seen play in New York sports, Derek Jeter, 
uh, Mark Messier. He has that it quality. There's something about him that makes me believe he can uplift this team. So I think this is a guy who has heard time and time again. He's too small. He's going to struggle against playoff defenses, which you saw he was. He did not struggle last year in the playoffs. It's fantastic in the playoffs. He's been fantastic in the playoffs the last two years. Um, I think he hears this. This is a guy who finished fifth in MVP voting last year. I think the Knicks are going to have a really good regular season. I think he's going to be more efficient with this team. I think there's a way you can see his scoring go down a little bit. I think you can see his assists go up. And I think he can be a much more efficient player than he was last year. And I think he's going to be in the thick of the MVP conversation. I'm going to put him in the top three. I'm not saying he's going to win it, but I think he's going to be right there and there because I think the Knicks are going to have a good year. I'm going to put them anywhere from 54 to 55 wins um, this year. I I think Jalen Brunson is going to be an MVP candidate again. I think he's going to come back hungry. I think he's going to improve his game. I think he's got more weapons to play with now. I expect I expect Jalen Brunson to be better than he was last season. Me too. Me too. Uh, Dexter, I saw in internet uh, new polemic, polemical mm. about Julius Randle again, but a fake. Né? It's a fake it was a news fake. about uh, Randall Jersey. Né? Yeah. Randall's Jersey. Uh, do you can tell for us what happened in New York about the subject? Yeah, so there was a there was a fan that took some pictures of the Knicks team store inside Madison Square Garden, and there were no Randall jerseys up there. And so there's a lot of speculation about what are the Knicks doing to Randall, and some Knicks fans started reacting, saying, oh, are they trying to trade Randall? You know, and I think there's a couple of things that could be going on. Then Randall also had a tweet where he said the truth will come to the light or something like that. Um, I personally don't think there's anything wrong going on there. It's possible Julius Randle's jersey could just be sold out. Another thing that I think is possible, though, this usually leaks early. He could be changing his number, and maybe that – I know you're supposed to submit it to the league by March. Maybe that just hasn't been announced or come out yet. It's somehow been kept under wraps. Maybe his jersey number's changing, and we'll find out on media day. Media day is in a couple of weeks. I'll be there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's been so much talk with Julius Randle And whether mm -hmm. or not he'll be with the Knicks past this season, he's extension eligible. I don't think the Knicks are going to offer him an extension now. I think they're going to wait and see because they want to make sure he's healthy. They want to make sure he's right, which makes sense. Um, but Julius Randle, I think we have to remember, Julius Randle was having a fantastic season last year. After a slow start, he was having easily his most efficient season. The shot selection was tremendous. Um, he, was, he was an all-star before he got hurt. Um, I, I thought he turned into a player. He looked fantastic when Ananobi came on the team. I think he's going to look even better with the fit of this team around him with Bridges. You don't have to ask him or Bridges to do too much. They can be second and third options. You have Ananobi. He's, they, they have so much versatility. I, I have no reason to believe that Julius Randle does not want to be a part of this Knicks team. I have zero, and I have no reason to believe the Knicks want to trade him unless they feel like there's some way they can upgrade his position at the four which I just don't see, or somehow upgrade themselves at the five. I don't see it. I think Julius Randle wants to be a part of this team. Do I think Julius Randle wants to get paid? Absolutely. But I think that stuff will sort itself out. I think people are just looking for drama that necessarily isn't there. Honestly, I, I think they're looking for drama that isn't there. They try to stir something up that's not there. I'm sure Julius Randle will talk about this uh, come media day in a couple of weeks. Um, I also know there's another event that he's supposed to be at before media day that hopefully I will see him at and get a chance to talk to him. But I, I have, from what I've seen, Julius Randall making appearances on different podcasts. He was on 7 PM in Brooklyn with Carmelo and Miro, and he's excited about the season and wants to, wants to be there. So I haven't heard from anybody. I haven't heard anything. I haven't talked to Julius Randall himself, but people around him and people who know him, I haven't heard that. I, I think people are overreacting. It wouldn't shock me if the jersey was just sold out. It also wouldn't shock me if he's changing his number. That wouldn't shock me also. Maybe he's playing with a new number. new. I, I, I don't know. I, either way, I think the team that the Knicks have right now is what they're going to go to war with in October. 
and I think they'll make tweaks if necessary. I'm not saying Julius Randle can't get traded at the trade deadline, but I think the Knicks like this team and what they have, and they want Julius Randle to be a part of it. Now, in this moment, uh, I think nah, this drama totally, totally disnecessary. Totally, in this moment. Uh, in the past, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> me with Randall, in so many moments, uh, yeah, I like yeah. Randall, I don't like Randall, <laughs> do you know? Right. But now, in my opinion, Randall found your, your place in these teams, do mm -hmm. you know? Uh, because now Jalen Brunson is the, the best player in this team, nah? uh, the, the first option nah? from in attack uh, from this team. So now, for me, uh, it's, it's a bullshit, okay, <laughs> with Randall now. Oh, look, me, I, Victor Hachiba talking this, do you believe? <laughs> Now, I don't want trade Randall. Totally disnecessary. Because yeah, now, I yeah. uh, this guy found your place in this team. Yeah. I, th Victor, there's a lot of Knicks fans that have been up and down, like you said, up and down with Randall, right? Up and down. For one time, they, and, and to be fair, you know, he had his first year here, you know, it, it wasn't great. And then the second year was tremendous, Made the you know, when they made the playoffs and Then the third year was down when he gave the thumbs down to the fans. That wasn't mm -hmm. good. And he learned from that. But the last two years, he's been an all-star three times. He's been second team all NBA twice, two times. He's think about this. He's been one of the 15 best players in the league twice. He's been amazing. Um, he probably would have got a third time second team all NBA if he didn't get hurt last year. So I, I, fans, he's been a good Nick. Like I think fans, some fans still don't like from when he gave them the thumbs down. I think you got to move past that. The guy's been a pretty good Nick for most of his years. I'd say three out of the five years have been really good. Um, I think most people would sign up for that. We know he's not the best player on the team. That's Jalen Brunson, like you said, but he's the second best player on the team. And he's really important. If the Knicks had him against the Pacers, I think they would have won that series. They could have used his shot creation. Now, does Julius Randle have something to prove in the playoffs? Absolutely. He still yes. does. No doubt about it at all. But I think, Victor, maybe more fans should come to where you are, I think, in understanding that he's valuable to this team. He's one of the best mm -hmm. forwards in the league. And... Let, I think he fits in well with what this team is trying to do. Um, this is a team, like I said, a lot of versatility, a lot of depth, um, and he's a versatile player that can help stretch the floor, play off Brunson, create shots for others. He's going to need some time also coming back from this injury and getting comfortable, but I, you know, I, I think he'll be fine. I, think, I expect Julius Randle to have a good year too and bounce back, and if Julius Randle starts off slow, the fans cannot – go crazy we saw it last year he started off shooting the ball very not well um but i think the effort's going to be there and he's playing for a contract i think Julius rand will be fine me too i i totally agree again bro uh i saw today in a channel from brazil talking about uh randall making a small ball with new york, the new york knicks mm -hmm. in sometimes okay uh in games uh do you believe it has a chance in, in uh, some moment uh new york knicks make uh a small ball with randall uh, uh in five in your your opinion yeah i i would be i would be shocked if tom timido doesn't experiment with that at some point this year i would be shocked about that because I think it's going to be a matchup thing, right? You look at the fact that, and I'm explain why I think he could do that. I think a lot of people tell, say, hey, Dexter, well, you know, Tom Thibodeau always likes to have a big center. He always likes to have rim protection. That is true. But one of the things I think fans have to look at when they look at this Knicks team is that Tom Thibodeau has always played this way, but Tom Thibodeau has never had 
wing defense as good as he has now with OG Ananobi, Mikel Bridges, and even sometimes if you throw Josh Hart out there, if you have the three of them out there, they can wreak havoc. And I think you'll see that sometimes. You don't need rim protection as much if people can't get to the rim. And with those yes. guys, Mikel Bridges, OG Ananobi, Josh Hart, they're going to stop a lot of people from just being able to get to the rim. So I think there are situations where Tom Thibodeau can trust the team to be a little smaller, have Julius Randle play to five, stretch it out. Depends on the matchups and the teams you play. I think that could work. When you play Boston and they don't have Porzingis on the floor, who's there, they're not going to have him for the first no. part of the season. That could work. You know, when you play uh, Indiana, a team like Miles Turner, not a very, very big center, but likes to stretch out, take him away from the rim. That could that can also work. Some other teams like Orlando, even with Philadelphia, you want to challenge him because you could then put an OG Ananobi on Joel Embiid. We saw that game four, the first round against Philadelphia. The Knicks went small. Precious Achua, OG Ananobi in that game when there were no when there was no Mitchell Robinson. You saw Tom Thibodeau go with that down the stretch. So Tom Thibodeau has shown you he's willing to go small in certain matchups, and I think you will experiment more with Julius Randle at the five. What I think Knicks fans are going to say is, "Oh, well, a couple of years ago he wouldn't do it with Obi Toppin." Well, that was the problem. You had Obi yeah. Toppin and Julius Randle playing the 4-5. Now you have OG Ananobi next to Julius Randle, a superior elite wing defender Whoa. in this league. And and that's and with Mikel Bridges, another elite wing defender, it's going to be hard to get to the basket on the Knicks. That's the thing. I think people need to respect that. Can you get to the basket on the Knicks? They got three guys who can really lock you up at if they put them on the floor. So you don't need as much rim protection if guys can't get to the basket. And I think it's going to be hard to get to the basket on the Knicks. Maybe almost as the only other team I think that can really boast that is the Celtics because they have mm-hmm. Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Their wing defense is, and I didn't even mention Derek White. That's a team that is hard to get to the rim on the rim to, and they don't have a big shot shot blocker. Horford's not a huge shot blocker. Porzingis is a good def- help help defender, but not known as a big shot blocker. But the key is. It's hard to get to the rim on the Celtics. Very, very hard because of their wing defense. And that's where the Knicks also match up well with the Celtics because they can bring that perimeter defense that almost not many teams in the league have. Uh, and OG Alunobi, what's your opinion about this guy? Because Nick fans love né, this guy because OG Alunobi né, uh, become a Nick. New York mm-hmm. Knicks né, wins a lot, né? Uh, so many, so many games now nah, uh, with OJ Anunobi. What's your opinion about uh, OJ Anunobi in this team? I love OJ Anunobi. I love that trade when it happened. It was sad to see uh, Emmanuel quickly go, who's one of my favorite uh, Knicks to watch there. But I thought when the Knicks made that trade, it, the Knicks have made some good moves about fit. It's been a lot about fit for the Knicks. He fit perfectly for the Knicks. He knows his role, wing guy, 3 and D player, can knock down the three, highly efficient, moves well without the ball, um, can defend one through five. I mean, he's he's an elite, elite wing defender. How good is mm-hmm. OG Ananobi? OG Ananobi is so good at defense, and this is the key with him. If he's healthy, Victor, if he's healthy, he absolutely is a guy who should be in a defensive player of the year candidate, right? He's that level of talent. Um And I think the defense is only going to elevate, only going to elevate with a guy like Mikel Bridges next to him and with a guy like Josh Hart coming off the bench and and, and pushing him. Um, I think he's a he's a great role player. Was it a high price what the Knicks paid for him? And yeah, of course. But he had all the leverage and you, you had to bring him back after what you traded for him. But he's a perfect fit. And with the salary cap going up in a couple of years, that contract's going to be a steal. OG Ananobi is a perfect fit. I love it. I, th- I think he was a, it was a great trade for the Knicks. Um, great to keep him in the system. He wants to be here. I just hope he's healthy because there's a key. I think he's so important to the Knicks and his health going forward. If he's healthy, I mean, health is going to matter a lot for the Knicks, but he's key for them. He's like Randall. He's very key for this team in terms of what they could do. Well, I, I really want to uh, see this team, all these players now. Nah. Randall, OG, uh, Mitchell Robinson, Jalen Brunson, and Michael Bridges. Bro, really, uh, this team, contender, in my opinion. It's a yeah. contender. 
Um, but I I remember now about uh, draft. Uh, I want I want your opinion about uh, Tyler Kolek. Co mm. wh what's your expectation? Because uh, I saw in summer league uh, so many uh, Nick fans excited about this player. Uh, what's your opinion about uh, Tyler? So I, I was at summer league this year. I had the chance to go out there for the first time and I was very impressed with Tyler Kolek. Uh, not just in watching him play, but also talking to him. I got to talk to him after uh, the game they played against the Nets. Actually, I, I was talking to him after that game. He had a very good game in that one. Um, actually, he, they lost that game, but he played well, played very good in the next game against the Kings hit a big shot, hit the game-winning shot uh, for them to get the win. And one of the things I loved about him is that he has such great command of running the offense. You could tell he's a guy who played in college, <clears throat> excuse me, for four years. He had great command. The players respected him. He wasn't doing too much on the floor, Victor. He had really good command of the offense. I think that I think he's a player to watch in training camp. Somebody, I, I did a question on my show, New York Got Game the other day, and somebody asked me, which Knicks rookie do I think had the best chance to get some rotation minutes this year? And I said I would go with Kolek, although it's hard because he's now behind Brunson and Bridges, and it's not Bridges, excuse me, McBride and Cameron Payne, um, who they signed as well too. But I would say watch out for Kolek because if he pushes – and plays well. The thing is, I think it'll be how well does he play on defense? Um, if he's really good on defense and pushes, we have a chance to see what happened with Manuel quickly a couple of years ago where he played so well in training camp and in the preseason, Tom Thibodeau had no choice to be like, hey, this guy's good. It's a good two-way player. We got to play mm -hmm. him. I think you could see some of that. And I think he also will be ready if, you know, I think Bridges will play a little bit more. I'm sorry, Bridges. McBride will play a little bit more at the two guard spot off the bench and you'll probably see campaign play some of the one, but if there's an injury to either one of those guys, I think Kolek will be the first person to get the call and step in. Watch how he plays in the minutes he gets, um, especially against some NBA competition. But what, what I saw out of him in summer league, I would be excited about. Um, I think he's the one rookie that has a chance to crack the rotation. I then put Ariel Hawk Porty behind him. Um, and I like the kid they drafted, but Calm Daddy, I think he's a good project. But there's too many wings ahead of him. I think he's a ways away. Um, but Kolek's the guy I think that is easily the most NBA ready right now, could contribute to the team. I like his game. He knows when to score, knows when to pass. Um, I don't think he's as talented as a shooter as quickly, um, mm -hmm. but he's got good fearlessness, and he can run a team. That's, the, that's mm -hmm. what I was impressed with. He can run a team. So Knicks fans should definitely keep their eye on him in the preseason and how he's playing through training camp. He's one of the players I'll be watching very closely. Oh, that's great. I believe in this guy. You know, I this guy, I I agree with you, Tom Chimbodon. Nah? Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, uh, a little minutes, nah, sometimes, nah, garbage time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe this guy... In NBA, but uh, we'll see. We'll see in the future. But I, I super so. believe. I super believe in this guy. And um, uh, another subject: uh, Nick fans in this off season talking so much about New York Knicks needs uh, another center. Okay, mm -hmm. I saw so many rumors. For example, Kessler, now. Nah? Kessler from Utah Jazz and another players, uh, Nick's, Nick's rumors. Uh, what's your opinion about this? And do you believe New York Knicks uh, has a chance? Uh, uh, got it, a uh, new center. If got it, new center, uh, which you believe uh, he uh, is he this guy, in your opinion? There was a lot of rumors, you're right, Victor, this summer. A lot of rumors, a lot of rumors about it. I think the Knicks are going to be patient with this. I think they're going to wait and see how things look. You know, I think early on you'll see um, you'll see Precious Chew, excuse me, get the shot at the backup role. 
But I think they'll work and see how that size is. And it, that also tells you a little bit that Knicks might not be afraid of playing small. Like I said earlier, um, you'll probably see some Jericho Sims in certain situations. I've been told he's worked on a lot with his game. We'll see how he's improved with his game. I think if they feel like there's a need, they'll make a move at the deadline, if not earlier. But I think a guy, I think Kessler, the price, I, who I like a ton, because I like Kessler, because I think Kessler is somebody who could eventually a little, be a little bit more offensively versatile than Mitchell Robinson. Um, and then if he got him, eventually supplant him. He fits into their timeline. But Nick Richards is another guy I like for them to keep an eye on out of Charlotte. Uh, they're back up. He's backing up Mark Williams right now. We'll see how that goes. Mark Williams has been healthy down in Charlotte, so we'll see. But Nick Richards is a good player. Talked with some people at Summer League about him um, and, and and how he plays, um, and, and and they like what he gives. But I think he's a guy that fits the Knicks. I think what the Knicks have to, are looking for in a backup center is not just somebody that can rebound and defend, but they're trying to get a little bit of what they lost with Isaiah Hartenstein. And one of the most underrated aspects for me when talking Knicks fans about Isaiah Hartenstein, is what he did in the pick and roll with Brunson. Their numbers were tremendous in the pick and roll. And the real ability of why it was so good, it was Isaiah Hartenstein's ability to pass the ball. Can you get yourself another big who has really good passing skills? Can Precious Achua develop that? Because if Precious Achua somehow can give you some of that rebounding along with the passing, even if it's 60% of what you had from... Isaiah Hardenstein, that's huge because that's what they you want to lose. You know, the Knicks last year, they, had a, they were lucky. They were getting 48 minutes of really great center play, whether you split it up between Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hardenstein. Now to get back of that is they're going to lose a little bit on the offensive rebounding. Can you find that center that has that? It can give you the rebounding and the passing. That's really what they need, more or less than scoring. It's really rebounding and passing. That's the key if they can find that. That's where I mentioned Hawk Purdy and why I thought he could be good in one of the Knicks draft picks. I was impressed with some of his passing ability in Summer League, just Summer League, but I was impressed with some of that, and I was like, ah, I could see him developing into the kind of big that Tom Thibodeau needs. I think that's what the Knicks need to figure out. It's not just a body and size. It's finding somebody that can replicate some of the skills that Hartenstein had. But if the Knicks make that move, I think it'll be a little bit deeper into the season when we get to 20, 25 games or so, and they assess the team and see – where they are and how they look. If there's a need and you see it where you need that more size, I think they'll go out and address it. But I think I think Kessler's somebody to still look at, um, depending on how the jazz season goes. And then I also think Nick Richards, uh, Jonas Valanciunas is another name you're going to hear a lot of because his contract's very tradable. I like the passing and scoring there. I don't love the defense for him. That's where I'm a little concerned and why I like a guy like Nick Richards a little better. But I think those are three names you could definitely hear about for Knicks in terms of a backup center. Uh, great. And uh, Dexter, what's your expectations with the New York Knicks in the next season? Conference finals, the title. What's your expectations with New York Knicks? Yeah, I expect this Knicks team to be a uh, on the other side of 53 wins, I say 54 to 55 wins. Um, I think they have a really good regular season. Um, I think because of Boston being without Porzingis the first few months of the year, I think there's a legitimate chance the Knicks could challenge for that number one seed. Um, I think I'm going to say this. I don't know if they're going to win the title, but I think the Knicks take the next step. I think they get to the conference finals. I think they at least get to the conference finals this year. Um, I hope it's against Boston because I think that will be fantastic for the NBA. Uh, Nick Celtics Conference Finals. The energy will be insane between New York and Boston. Um, Boston is a great team. Um, they'd be a great challenge. The Knicks are loading up to try to beat them. But I'm going to say Conference Finals. That's what I'll say. Can the Knicks get past that? Absolutely. Can they get to the NBA Finals? Absolutely. Can they win it all? Absolutely. This is the first time we've been able to say this in a long time. The Knicks are true contenders. They can absolutely win it all. But I think it's gonna, I think they're gonna take another step and maybe have to then take another step the following year. But I think if they make the conference finals, somebody asked me the other day, what's a successful season for the Knicks? I think if they make the conference finals, it's a very successful season for them. Um, and I think if they're competitive in that conference finals, if I say they lose in seven to the Celtics, 
they'll have mm-hmm. nothing to be ashamed about. It'll hurt for us, the Knicks fans. It'll hurt for the Knicks fans for sure. But I think it's, I think conference finals is, is my expectation. I just, I like the Knicks' depth. I think they're not heavy with star power, but I think they're deep and versatile. And I think that's why I like this Knicks team to be better than some other teams in the East. Mm, great, bro. I am so happy. I am so happy. <laughs> uh, talk with you. Do you know? Do you know, bro? I, love it, I, I, I like so much. I like your job, bro. It's a great Thank honor. You. It's a great honor to uh, talk you, with you in, in Nick Fans Brazil channel. Uh, thank you so much, Dexter. Thanks so much. I hope talk with you in the in the, the future. Oh, you and, know, anytime. Uh, Victor, you know, anytime, man. Anytime you ask me to come on, we'll make it happen. We'll do it again during the season. I always love to talk to you and shout out to all the Knicks fans in beautiful Brazil. Uh, love all the beautiful Knicks fans and thank you for supporting the content. And uh, yeah, Victor, we'll do it again soon, man. Uh, I, I, I am your fan, bro. I like your job. I Thank really, you, really uh, hope, né? God bless you so much, né? Uh, Thank you, and, brother. Uh, I hope see you, meet you in the future. In yes, New York. we have to do I that. Hope. Yes, we I gotta hope. get you to the. Gotta get you to the garden, and and we gotta do it. Um, I, yeah, I want to. I haven't met any international fans. I was supposed to meet a Nick fan from Germany. He came last year, and then I had a conflict, and I wasn't yes. at the garden. Uh, Daniel John, um, who I didn't get yes. to meet from Germany, good, good Nick fan from there. So I love meeting and talking to the international Knicks fans. It's so beautiful to see it. You know, somebody who covers the team, it's, it's beautiful to, to meet the fans from all around the world. It's beautiful. Uh, great. I make it in this channel um, interview with Daniel. From, from Germany. Oh, yeah. I saw when you guys did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw when you guys did that. I love that. Daniel's a good, <laughs> good guy. Shout out to Daniel. I agree. I agree with you. Bro, again, thank you so much. Okay. And uh, I hope to see New York Knicks. Nah, it's a great team in the next season. And nah, I talk with you in the, in the future. And thank you again, bro. Okay? You're well, welcome. Okay. People, uh, give your like uh, and follow Dexter Henry in social media. And thank you again. Okay, let's go next, people.